So there's this guy on the radio who keeps telling me to wake you guys up when September ends. I guess that's what I'm here to do. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another monthly wrap-up, this time for the month of September of the good old year of 2022, guys. Quite the month. I felt a little sluggish with my reading this month, and I'll explain that kind of as I go along if you haven't been keeping up with the weekly updates. But, you know, there was still plenty to talk about, so uh, we're going to go ahead and do a wrap-up. As per usual, let's begin with what I read in the month of September. I read five books this month, and I have two that are kind of still in progress, which I'll explain along the way. Let's go ahead and talk about what I did finish first, uh, the rereads. I did uh, reread A Clash of Kings. I actually started that one in August, so I want to really count, but about half of it did happen this month. I love revisiting The World of Ice and Fire. It's a lot of fun for me, and doing this reread for the first time in over a decade plus uh, has been very, very fun. I am so happy to be back in that world. As far as when I'm going to do Storm of Swords, we'll see because there are a lot of holiday plans that are already kind of locked in. And then I did reread Fahrenheit 451 by Mr. Ray Bradbury. I mean, I don't know how else to say it, guys. One of the greatest books of all time and very much uh, a book that I think is so polarizing that, you know, no matter what generation you talk to, they're going to look around and be like, hey, this is happening right now. You know, every generation before us has said that. Every generation after us is probably going to say that about a book like Fahrenheit 451. Just a really, really important book and a part of our pop culture, without a doubt. And uh, guys, even if you haven't read that, I'm pretty sure if you did, you'd find a lot of things in there. You'd be like, huh, I see a lot of these things in my real life. Everyone's going to do that when they read that book. That's what makes it kind of special. But it is very much a, a warning. Hey, what a shot, guys. Burning books? It's kind of bad. Uh, then we did into some of the new things here. Fairy tale, Stephen King. He did have a new book this month. And obviously, when there's a new Stephen King, that goes straight to the top of the list. And it did. Read it in about two days. You know, as I usually do with a Stephen King book, I will burn through a, a, a new one. Uh, plenty of things that I did like about it. I did actually review it on the channel. But uh, talking about that book, I, I think that uh, I liked a lot of it. There were some things that just kept it just from being one of his great ones though. So it is one of those I kind of say is just kind of on par with uh, something like the Institute or or something like that that he's done rather recently. But uh, still very much a, a book I think is very much worth reading. The Wolf's Hour, continuing with my journey through the library of Mr. Robert McCammon. Uh, I think this was kind of maybe the first miss for me. I talked about it more in my last weekly update in that uh, you, you look at the high bar that swan song and boy's life set and i think that might have played into it a little bit plus i'm just i'm not very much of an espionage guy even uh world war ii era uh, i really love the werewolf stuff i like the uh the backstory the coming of age section was really good but the real-time story was just okay and that kind of dragged it down a lot for me but still uh even a uh, not necessarily a great mccammon book is still very much worth your time and then i did the troop which was the first of my spooky season reads that's by nick cutter and that was a really, really cool book. I liked it a lot. I'm glad that you guys did recommend that one to me. Uh, my couple that I'm still working on here, uh, The Legend of Black Jack by A.R. Witham. About a third through that. I will be honest here with you guys. I feel like it might be a little too young for me, a little too YA. Uh, it's nothing uh, bad about the book. I think it just, it might be for younger audiences than me because I was just finding myself being like, eh, this kind of feels like uh, Percy Jackson or something like that. So uh, I think that might just be like a me thing. I have nothing wrong with the book whatsoever. And I do still intend to finish it. I am kind of having a little bit of fantasy burnout right now. I don't know if that's the book that I want to try to, uh, you know, struggle through it. And then, of course, The Blackest Heart by Brian Lee Durfee. I'm about two-thirds through that one. So I imagine I'll be finishing that up sometime in October along with the rest of my spooky season reads, guys. But this leads me to my book of the month. Now, last month, remember, it was pretty much a... A photo finish. It was very much came down to the wire. Ended up going with the classic. Now with this one, guys, I know everyone thinks I'm going to go with Stephen King here. Now I want you to let you know I don't count rereads. So obviously Clash of Kings, which Clash of Kings is the best book I read this month, but I'm not going to count rereads. Clash of Kings and Fahrenheit 451 do not count on this list here. I got to go with The Troop by Nick Cutter. I think this was just kind of everything that I really needed. Like I said, I was having a little bit of that fantasy burnout. 
shifting genres is always something really good to do when that is happening. And I think with this one, it was just enough of almost like an homage to several things that I love. I did get a lot of Stephen King's Carrie out of that. I did get a lot of John Carpenter's The Thing out of this. It was very, very gripping, guys. It was one of those, if I didn't have adult responsibilities, I probably would have finished that book in a day uh, because I sat on the couch that morning and I read about the first 250, 300 pages in one sitting. I was very, very locked in, like it a lot, very much uh, has the coming of age, the young kids and all that stuff that I really like in my horror story and just a little bit of freakiness. Now, I, I will say, guys, it is a very disturbing book. It's very descriptive. It's really gross. It will make you never want to eat again. And it has some things that I think that some people might think go a little too far. So if you're very sensitive to things like that, obviously these are, you know, like 11 year old kids that these bad things are happening to. If that's something you can't really handle, uh, I'd say, yeah, maybe, maybe it's not for you. But if you're like me, you grew up with the stuff like that. Like I said, the John Carper's a thing and Friday the 13th, things like that. Uh, with the young kids, you, you know, if you grew up with like 80s horror, I think that you would probably like it quite a bit because it did very much feel like a throwback to that. And, you know, just kind of a, a hat tip to several horror icons, namely Stephen King being one of them, that I like quite a bit. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very anxious to try more Nick Cutter books now uh, along the way. I know that I had no idea he had written this much. Uh, I looked it up after this, how much I liked this. I had no idea. I thought I'd heard of The Deep and, and, and The Troop. That was it. But he's got several other books I think I want to try now. No idea which I would be doing next. But uh, it would definitely be on my radar. So book of the month for September, guys, uh, leading us into uh, spooky season here, I think is perfect pick. The Troop by Nick Cutter. Check it out. I'll put the link down below. Let's talk about a little channel growth. Guys, it was a great month for the channel. It really, really was. I think a new Stephen King release always helps with that. But I did cross 80,000 subscribers on the channel, so thank you guys. You continue to be amazing. Uh, that silver play button on my wall someday doesn't seem like such a pipe dream now like it did when I first started this channel. So uh, exciting times, guys. You don't know that's when you hit 100,000 subscribers. So uh, yeah, just super, super excited about the direction that the channel's uh, headed in. I have kind of spun off to a secondary channel now, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, yeah, just great things I feel like are on the horizon here. And I'm still having a lot of fun doing this, even if there are things that it seems like I gripe about when I'm going to get into a section like channel growth. I just want you guys to know, because that's just because I'm transparent. I want you guys to know how the channel is doing. And that begins with talking about the subscriber count, right? It's the first thing that people look at. 2,814 new subscribers. That's up 230 from August. And guys, that is the best month all of 2022. So uh, yeah, like I said, when you have a new Stephen King book out and you read it right away and you get a review up ASAP, uh, it's going to get a lot of new eyes on the channel. And I think that did kind of help a little bit. 397,000 views. That's up 25,000 from August. That is the best month of all of 2022. So we're seeing a nice little trend here, right? Uh, 60,000 hours of watch time up 3,000 from August. That's the best month since May of 2022. So again, guys, uh, overall, looking at the numbers, best overall combined month in all of 2022. So great. September's have historically been pretty good for the channel. I don't know if that's because like uh, the kids have gone back to school and people got time. <laughs> They're not traveling as much anymore. But so September usually seems to be about the time that the channel starts going really, really great and the fall goes well. And then we hit the new year and everything goes... Whew. I don't know. It's because, you know, TOS changes every year, it seems like. But uh, yeah, a uh, great month and very, very happy with the way that things are going. And like I said, a new Stephen King release does always help. And that leads me into the next category, guys, which is gonna be most popular content, where I think that might come up again. I did release 16 videos in September. Now, when I talk about the most popular ones, I don't count uh, off the books or weekly updates. I didn't do an off the books this month, so that's no big deal. In fact, I'm not gonna be doing off the books anymore. Check out that uh, the announcement of, uh, of Mike's media reviews if you wanna understand the history behind that. But with this, guys, yeah, no weekly updates, but I did have some really, you guys do like the weekly updates, and I appreciate that because I love doing the weekly updates. I did actually have one cross 10,000 views for the first time. That's unusual for a weekly update. So I, I don't know if people thought I was gonna rant about Rings of Power or what, but I don't usually get that many views on a weekly update, but I am not counting those. Let's talk about the ones, the five most popular videos on the channel this month. Uh, the Fairy Tale Review, obviously, by Stephen King. 31,000 views. Yeah, my reviews never get that many views anymore, guys. So obviously, you know, it is a brand new release. I've cracked the code, guys. Apparently, if Stephen King puts out a new book and you and you do a review in the first 48 hours, you're going to get a lot of a lot of views. You know, <laughs> it's amazing how that works, right? So uh, yeah, I'm glad that people were excited to hear about 
my thoughts on fairy tale by stephen king uh still getting a ton of comments on that video so much that i can't keep up with them anymore but uh, i am excited that people were excited about uh, stephen king content on the channel because you know guys i do love talking about Stephen King, and that is no exception. Uh, Rings of Power, episodes one and two, my thoughts on that, 11,000 views. Also got some of the most positive, but also some of the most nasty comments that I've gotten on the channel in a long time. So it's one of those weird things. I think that, that show was just like that enigma where if I'm negative on it, I get told like I'm an ist or I'm, a, I don't know, something. If I'm po if I'm positive on it, I get told that I hate Tolkien. So it's just one of those shows. It's like no matter what your take on it is, people will have very very wild opinions on it. And uh, I am supposed to be going to uh, onto Philip uh, Philip's channel soon to be talking with him and AP Canavan. I think when the season's over, we're going to get together and just talk about Rings of Power season one overall. We'll have lots of thoughts there. Uh, August 2022 book haul, eleven thousand views again. Book hauls usually end up on this list as a number one spot. So it is a, a weird exception this month that it comes in third. People always love a good book haul. You know what? I love doing it. I love thanking you guys for the amazing things that you sent to me. My spooky season plans. Uh, that's basically everything I'm going to read in October. All my horror stuff. That had 10,000 views. Always a fun announcement to release that list because I love horror, guys. It just doesn't really move the needle very much with my audience. So I feel like October... Kind of that one month a year where everybody's a little more interested in getting into the spooky stuff. So I try to kind of squeeze a lot of it in in October. And then, of course, my fall TBR plans. I had 8,000 views. And uh, I say it all the time. The one people, the one thing that people love hearing me talk about more than what I have read is what I'm going to read. And that's why I think they do love uh, a good TBR uh, update. Now, with that, guys, I do have kind of a... Uh, Premature announcement, because this isn't like something that's in stone yet, but just something that I've just kind of got some feedback on. I do my TBRs every quarter, and people like those. And I, I feel like I'm, for the most part, until recently, have always been able to kind of stick to those schedules. Uh, people want me to go back to doing monthly TBR videos. I, I've always said I felt like that's, I don't want to say lazy. I, I just felt like it makes it way too... I don't know, easy? <laughs> I feel like I challenge myself a little bit if I make a schedule. It's just it's just a me thing, That that's all. But uh, people have said they do want me to go back to doing monthly TBR videos. Never really actually did that, but uh, I guess I could if that's what you're looking for. So uh, January would be the first time I think I'll experiment with that and see if that's really what you guys want. If not, by April, I'll go back to going to the seasonal TBRs because, uh, yeah, it's always fun to talk about what we are going to read. And I do, guys, I do plan my TBR a good year to 15 months in advance because I work in finance. I work, work in risk analysis. It's just what we do. It's just a thing. But, uh, yeah, some favorites I like that didn't really actually uh, get as high a view as all these. Obviously, my discussion with Fonda Lee, anytime you get to talk to a major published author, a New York Times bestseller, it's a very, very exciting time for me. And Fonda was amazing. She was one of the nicest people I've ever spoken to. And uh, just such a fun conversation. I had a blast speaking with her. It's one of those things like whenever I do get an interview with an author, I am a little nervous beforehand. Once the camera comes on, you know, I'm absolutely fine. I don't really get starstruck or anything. I think I'm always just worried that I'm going to ask them a question. They're just going to give me short one or two word answers. I'm not going to know what to do. But uh, one of the easiest people I've ever talked to. Hope you guys will, will listen to that because she is really, really awesome. I'm excited to see how her career goes, uh, you know, goes forward after this because I uh, I did love the the Jade uh, Greenbow saga. I liked it a lot, and uh, I'm excited to see what she's up to next. She's working on a sci-fi series, she told me in that interview, and I can't wait to see how she does. Uh, my reviews on the channel I've talked about recently that people just don't seem very interested in reviews anymore, at least for me, because I, I don't know if it's just because I'm doing nothing but old books or what. I, I think they just want to do me to do stuff that's brand new, and I don't read a lot of things that are brand new because I got so many old series I still want to read. But I did really enjoy talking about The Godfather and finishing up my Lord of the Rings reviews with Return of the King. Those were two of my personal favorites this month. Uh, I hope you'll, you'll scope them out if you do get a chance because I do still love doing book reviews guys i mean that's why that word is in the title of the channel book review i, I i'm never going to stop doing them but i think i might be getting about close to finishing with you know 50 60 70 year old books uh spoiler free i, I don't think anyone really has an interest in that i always kind of look at them as a, hey this is why i think maybe you should read them i don't want to ruin that theory i just i hate spoiling stuff for people it can be a book that's 200 years old and i don't want to spoil it. i don't want to tell you what happens in mary shelley's frankenstein that's just how i am so that's why i i have been doing you know the spoiler free content for a few years now 
So, uh, I don't know. That's just in flux, how, what I'm going to do with that. But uh, that brings me, guys, to my flop of the month. And what this is is just my least viewed video. Nothing I'm really like overly bummed about or anything like that. Just something that didn't really click. Uh, it, it does kind of kind of suck because I feel like the the ratings for House of the Dragon keep going up on HBO every month, but yet our viewers for our after show keep going down every episode. Uh, but uh, episode number six, uh, we got 2,500 views uh, for for Throne Zone. Uh, the thing is with that is is that's just something I look forward to every week because I'm excited to have that water cooler show back and I get to talk to two of my closest friends and Scott and Madison. It's great. It's always a lot of fun. I understand not everybody's interested in an hour long spoiler discussion of a show that just aired. I, I get that if. They're not even watching. Why would they be interested in that? But I, I do wish more people would join us live because we do love interacting with the audience while we do that. And uh, we're going to keep doing that every Monday until the show does end. So uh, who knows? Who knows? Maybe the... I feel like maybe the episode where the time jump happened just kind of demotivated a lot of people. I don't know. We'll see uh, with the new episode coming up if the ratings went down at all. Because it seems like that show's ratings go up every month. We'll see. Let's talk about a little October goals before I go, guys. Spooky season. I'm hoping that it can help me get out of this kind of this fantasy funk that I'm in right now where I just I just don't want to seem to read anything that's fantasy. You know, I got these two books coming up next. I think that that's going to be very exciting times for me. And I think it would definitely help me kind of cleanse the palate a little bit and get ready for more fantasy because I want to finish The Blackest Heart. I'm going to be reading Robin Hobb again in November. I'm excited to get into some of these series. And I hope that this, uh, this little funk I've got going with fantasy can kind of clear on out of here. I'd like to find that balance between Mike's book reviews and Mike's media reviews. Uh, like I said, if you missed that, my secondary channel is everything that I'm into that's not about books. That's what that channel is going to be. Now, Mike's book reviews is still my number one priority. Nothing's going to change over here, but I don't want to completely just neglect that channel. I have said that I, I will be some times where it feels like I don't put anything new on there for a couple of weeks, unless it's like a short or something. I have started doing a couple shorts now and then, uh, but it, it's something that I, I'm not looking to double my workload, basically is what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not taking away from Mike's book reviews, but you know I'd like to also not just completely ignore the other channel. So I think that there's uh, it's, it's so much more free over on that channel where I can kind of do you know here everything's 20 minutes and I, I want to do everything so uniformed and correctly the way that I've been doing it uh, over there. I feel like I've got way more leeway. Hey, I want to put out a five six minute video. I can do that. It's not a big deal. So uh, yeah, I just keep on working on that, but uh, not ever get to the point where I feel like I'm neglecting either one of the channels just because I don't feel like it, you know, or I feel like I don't have to. So find that nice balance there. And as always, guys, try to continue to spread positivity in this community because I think that the BookTube community is really, really great. I've made uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of real life friends while doing this. And I think by spreading positivity uh, helps that continue to grow and just always you know, want to make this a place where everyone feels welcome. Anyone and everyone, you're always welcome here. Uh, I, I, I get so sad when I hear content cre creators saying, hey, if you believe this or this or this, I don't want you here. That's not me, guys. I just want you, if you want to talk about books, you are welcome here all of the time. And guys, that's going to be uh, an October goal. It's going to be a November goal. It's going to be a December goal. It's going to be a 2023 goal, 2024, 2025. However long I do this, that's going to be a goal for me here. I want everyone to feel welcome here. And I hope that you do. And I hope that these wrap-ups help you continue to feel like a part of the channel. Because that was always the goal when I came up with this segment. But guys, that was October for me. What was your book of the month? Why don't you drop in the comments and let me know. And I'll talk to you there.